Almo Shazelks, which I try to um, yeah, practice pronouncing his last name a bit better and yet failed. Um, so yeah, Arno um, studied at the at Central Paris um, in the computer science and AI department. And nowadays he's working as a lead data scientist at Sicara, which is a data consulting um, startup specializing in computer vision. And he's gonna talk with us um, also about NLP, but from different direction about building NLP pipeline to detect relationship between fictional characters. So um, yeah, we are recording again. And Arnaud, the stage is yours. Um, and again, everyone, please ask your question in the chat, whether you are in Zoom or watching us um, in the YouTube live, live stream. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the talk, Imo. Um, so, can everyone see the slide? Um, yes, it looks good. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to talk about uh, building an NP pipeline for. Um, oh, sorry, I cannot see my remarks. Uh, oops. So, I'm going to talk about building an NP pipeline. Uh, this is going to be, I would say, a lot less state of the art uh, and uh, a lot more on implementing uh, uh, an NP pipeline uh, to do something you want uh, from nothing, I would say. Uh, so for an NLP expert, uh, some things may be well known and maybe boring. <laughs> I'm excusing myself for that, sorry. Uh, so let's go. And I added some uh, links, and we already talked about my ba background. Uh, so, whoops, sorry. Basically, right now I'm working uh, at Sika, which is oh, uh, a computer vision firm, and uh, we do things like optical character recognitions, detections, and uh, a lot of things about uh, image search and stuff like that. Uh, so first, uh, what's the story of the project? Uh, I used to be a student uh, at Central Paris uh, with, uh, all, with this whole team of eight people. Uh, we had like a stud uh, student project where we had to do something computer science related um, to prove what we could do and uh, work together. Um, we were eight students and we had around two months uh, with uh, around eight hours a week to work on this. And currently I'm sometime working on that project again uh, when I have some spa spare time, uh, but I don't have much spare time to do that. Uh, so what's the idea be, uh, between, behind the project? Um, we um, thought that it would be fun uh, to use uh, the unstructured data you can find on the web, so basically all the website, and use, use them to uh, get behind the, what is a theory or any, uh, is any story and make them into uh, a graph of the relationship between the characters. So basically, uh, if you think about Harry Potter, you start with uh, a web page and what people wrote on Wikipedia and fandoms and other websites. And you try to find the fact that Harry Potter is the enemy of Voldemort, is, um, going out with Ginny Wesley and uh, his friend with uh, both uh, Hermione and Ron, West, uh, and Ron Wesley. So that was the kind, that was the whole gist of it. And that's what we tried to do. Uh, obviously with the time we had, uh, the teacher just told us we had like no chance to do that. But as we were, I would say young and uh, foolish, we tried it. Um, and that's uh, where it started. Uh, so, to speak about the name, uh, there is this whole tradition in computer science to find uh, fun names uh, about everything. So I'm taking the example of uh, the egg stack. Uh, in um, data science, it's the same. We have YOLO, Tadam, Albert, and other funny names. Uh, so we cannot try to do our own things. And we named the project uh, SWAG, which was uh, stories mm -hmm. with antagonist graph. Uh, so yes, we re the name and uh, it was kind of silly, but it's what it is. 
Um, so what does the thing, the whole thing look like? Uh, so basically you start from a web page where you can input any story you think about. So for example, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, or whatever. Uh, then we start scrapping the page. Uh, so we scrap a bunch of page. When we apply, then we apply a bunch of uh, NLP algorithms. And uh, we do that with, uh, I would say, life status because it's taking a bunch of time. Uh, sometimes it's around three or 10 minutes. And then uh, we give you the results. So this is this uh, matrix of relationship where you can see uh, some relation between Saruman and Gandalf. And we'll see, we also have uh, a graph view. And what is really funny is that sometimes uh, it makes appear people that you don't even know about. So for example, Diago was uh, the, I think the, the, the friend and the cousin of Smeago. And it only appears, I think, uh, in uh, a few uh, minutes of the movie and of the series. Uh, basically, they discover the ring and uh, Smeago killed Diego. So that's the whole thing. It's finding this kind of relationship, which is really funny. Uh, so how does it work uh, from an architectural uh, standpoint? Uh, we choose to go with microservices, uh, which is, uh, I would say, now the classical way to go about it. Uh, we split it in finding data on the web, interacting with the user, and turning data into insights. And I have a blank page, I don't know why. And um, so we are around four or five services. Uh, the first one is the front that you can see. The second one is the back, which is uh, basically implementing the whole socket IO thing uh, to discuss with the front. And we have a scraping and an LP service. Uh, the front is using JavaScript and uh, communicating, communicating with the back with uh, web sockets using socket.io. And uh, the um, scrapping part is made with Go language, uh, basically because people uh, love that at the time and wanted to do, I would say, fast uh, routing like implementation of scrapping. And uh, NAP is made with Python, which is, I would say, the standard at the time for like, doing every Thing that are sense rated and everything is communicating from a message queue, which is a nice way to do that because uh, it's an easy way to scale uh, the application. If you want to deal with more user, you just add another container, uh, which is listening to the message queue. Uh, so let's talk about the NLP part. I won't talk too much about uh, scrapping. Um, so first, I we used to go with an MTK at the time, which was uh, I think 2016. I don't think Stacy was uh, uh, that much of a thing at the time. Um, honestly, now uh, I'm trying to switch back to Spacey. Um, I wanted to show uh, a bunch of uh, reason to, cho to choose uh, Spacey versus an MTK. Um, I took this uh, graph from a medium post. Uh, honestly, uh, just if you think about starting an NLP pipeline, uh, use Spacey, not an LTK. Uh, when you will need an LTK, you will know about it, basically. It's like every time you want to go further or find something that you can do with uh, Spacey. Over the rest of the time, Spacey will be faster, uh, easier to use, and with a lot more uh, tools. Uh, so right now we are like in 2020 um, and I would have to apologize for not using BERT. Uh, so why are the reason we didn't use BERT? Uh, first, uh, we didn't have uh, money uh, to train or infer because uh, BERT needs GPU and GPU costs money. Uh, the second reason is we didn't have label data. We didn't have time to learn about BERT or like work and iterate on the model. And the last reason was uh, basically in 2016, BER did not exist. So that was, uh, I think, the first reason why uh, we didn't use BERT. Um, so joke apart, uh, the way we worked on it was uh, in a layer way. Uh, we, I'm going to go through all those uh, layers and how we did it. Uh, and uh, this is kind of a summary of it. 
So uh, first thing is entry selection. So at that point, you've scrapped a load bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, web pages, and you want to know uh, which page you have to use. Uh, a funny thing about scrapping stories is you have parodies and the overs uh, satire uh, pages or over stories. Uh, so for example, uh, this was epic movie. Uh, this is uh, kind of melting things from Harry Potter's and other movies. And I think uh, if you just read this page and use it, uh, it will basically say something like uh, Harry Potter killed Dumbledore, which will not help you find the re relationship between Harry Potter and Dumbledore. So how we do that? Uh, we want in, uh, I would say, an easy way. Um, so we basically uh, used some parody words and contain the frequencies of those in the web page. Uh, if you have too much, you just remove the page. Uh, there is a lot of things you can do with this kind of simple uh, word counting uh, things, such as uh, deciding whether your uh, page is in French or in English. And uh, you can just count some things like the stop words and remove the French page. Uh, I actually have to go with German, I guess, uh, as we are like in Berlin. I'm supposed to say, but uh, here we are. Um, so now you have uh, the page you want. Uh, what you should be doing with this is removing all the, um, uh, I would say, um, text uh, characters that are not relevant for processing. So there are things like uh, uncalls, uh, up arrows, and other things uh, that you have and you don't want to have in your model. Um, so the simple way to go with this is using regular expression. You find uh, some patterns and you remove them. Uh, it's kind of a pragmatic way to go about it. And uh, I think right now you may have uh, other way to do it with uh, more, I would say, advanced models, but kind of you do that internally. Um, so we used some um, regexes to remove uh, the anchors that are related to other articles or uh, quick page uh, notes. And here we are uh, without the full, the full page notes. I was going to speak about tokenization, but I think there is like a lot of uh, NLP people there. Uh, the gist of it is uh, we basically want with NLTK at the time. And uh, now we're switching to spacing, which is a lot more effective. Uh, another issue is splitting sentences. Uh, this can be really hard um, because um, when you use web page and you didn't really um, work with uh, the way you want to use the page, uh, if you remove all the tags, uh, you may have uh, some uh, fake sentences, which are uh, footnotes and uh, other comments coming from other parts, uh, which can make uh, the sentences in art. So we had to add rules over what uh, most uh, uh, basic libraries like um, NLTK and um, um, NLTK and uh, Spacey could do. And uh, now we have the sentences uh, there and clean. Um, so what we want to do is find the characters. So the first thing is to use a NER. Uh, we used a spacey, which is quite effective uh, at that. And we, what we did is uh, we retrained it uh, with um, some label data. Um, it helped us go uh, improve accuracy a lot. Um, so to do that, we used Prodigy, uh, which is a cool tool developed by Explosion AI, which are also working on spacey. Uh, it's really easy to do, and uh, it helps a lot um, to win time. Uh, the last thing uh, I would say in like the sentence level processing is uh, how do you find relationship? So you have two characters, and now you want to know if they are related in any kind of uh, relation. Uh, so we kind of cheated on that. Uh, so the way we act around it is uh, we thought that uh, any relation is basically uh, two characters and a relation word. So we kind of created um, a bunch of uh, relation words and we find, way, we find them in the sentences uh, using stems. Once we have that, uh, we, we um, 
get the relationship, uh, we match them with all the characters you have in the sentence, and we score all those. So the way we score those is uh, adding um, not a dependency parse thing at all, but we rather uh, used um, um, distance-based uh, um, score. Uh, so we made a custom score uh, based on distance and uh, using them, we uh, scored every relationship for every characters of every sentences. This is not optimal for a lot of reasons. Uh, the first thing is uh, you're not semantic at all. Uh, you have no idea about negation. So Dalvador is not Lux favor, won't work. Um, the relation uh, can be a lot harder because, for example, uh, you can say Lily and James have a son, and then if you use son as a keyword, we think that Lily and James uh, have a parent-child relationship, which is not the case at all. Uh, so why does it work? Uh, the first reason why it does work is uh, you have a lot of um, uh, relationship sentences, uh, thanks to a good uh, named uh, entity recognition algorithm. And the second way, uh, the second reason why is uh, with a lot of weak relation detection on a lot of example, it kind of uh, adds up to uh, a good performance. So at that point, you have all the sentences, uh, you add them and uh, you do a weighted sum on all the corpus. So basically something like uh, uh, a thousand pages. And once you're done, you add some threshold, and uh, with the thresholding, you predict the, the relationship between the characters. The last thing you have to add is um, character aggregation, because uh, in a corpus, you have a lot of way to relate to uh, single characters. So for example, you can say uh, Voldemort, also, also known as you know who. So you can pass those kind of sentences to make the relation between the characters and know, know that Voldemort and who know who is the same person. And the other way to do uh, that is uh, using name clustering. So uh, for example, if you only have Harry and Harry Potter, uh, you may guess that Harry and Harry Potter are the same person, which is not always the case because, because you can have James Potter. So we have, uh, we basically used, um, um, I would say a character level and uh, world level Levenstein distance, and we added some uh, other tricks uh, to uh, do this name clustering. So once you get that, uh, I would say you have everything to make it work or kind of work. And this is what we presented uh, to the teachers at the time. Uh, to go further, uh, there is a lot of reason uh, why this task is really hard. Uh, one of the first one is uh, the chronology of stories. Uh, basically, a story is, is about uh, evolution of characters with the plot. And uh, you can have a relationship that evolves a lot. So for example, Rogue went from the bad guy to the hero at the end of the story. And so at what point is the enemy and the friend of Harry Potter is not easy to say. Uh, the second thing is, uh, what is the meaning of relationship? Uh, it may depend a lot uh, between uh, the stories. So for example, in some stories, uh, you can have people fighting because that's basically what they do. That's like their studies or their work or whatever. So they may be start, uh, fighting for fun and not be enemy at all. Uh, so that makes relationships sometimes hard to define, mainly between friendly and um, I would say enemy relationship. Uh, the third thing which is hard is coreference, and uh, it happens a lot in sentences. So it's basically saying it's Harry Potter and then saying something like he is uh, the brother or he's the son of James Potter. And if you do that, uh, basically right now the algorithm, the algorithm won't be able to do anything about it. And um, we also talked about semantic. Uh, which is the previous example, and uh, entity linking, which is sometimes a really hard task because uh, some characters may be related in a lot of different ways to themselves. Uh, the last issue we had, which is maybe the most important one, is uh, knowing how good we are. Basically, uh, as uh, Limor said before, some tasks are really hard to kind of evaluate. And in our case, um, 
we didn't really have a corpus at all to know uh, what, were the, what were the relationship between all the characters. Um, and, and so that's a hard way, um, that, that's really hard to iterate uh, if we don't know if we're improving or uh, basically making the algorithm worse. So uh, one other thing I'm working on right now is kind of uh, labeling all this, uh, which is taking time. I tried to use uh, DBpedia uh, for the one who knows. Um, it's a, um, I would say structure, structured um, database based on uh, the Wikipedia uh, data. It's not really reliable for uh, relationship, uh, basically. So we kind of have to work on that. Um, the other thing we tried uh, and I'm currently working on is uh, labeling data uh, at the sentence level. And it's really hard because uh, there is no really good way to uh, label a relationship which is open, uh, in an open source way. Um, the way Project is going ab about it is um, they, are they encourage you to uh, use uh, dependency parsing. Uh, the dependency parsing UI and make a proposal. Uh, the other issue with this is uh, in a corpus of around uh, 1,000 uh, web pages, you have a lot of sentences that are useless and that you don't want to label at all. And so you will lose a lot of time. So you have to find a way to filter uh, out the sentences that are not relevant in any way. So the last thing I'm currently working on, and which is related to the previous one, is um, improving the way we detect relationship. And the first and easiest way to do it when you don't have labeled data is to use dependency parsing. So uh, I'm currently working on creating a bunch of rules uh, to detect um, and improve uh, the relationship detection. Um, this is hard because you are, it takes a lot of time to find all the way uh, around and to find examples that are uh, present in the corpus. Um, the cool way is that you can uh, afterward use that to validate and uh, label your data. So I think it's uh, kind of everything um, about the subject. Uh, I wanted to show a bunch of examples and what it looks like at the end. Uh, so um, on a lot of, um, I would say, stories, you have a lot too many uh, people that are involved. You cannot see uh, what's happening. If you zoom in, uh, you can see things like uh, this, where you can see that uh, Dumbledore's and Harry Potter's are related in a mentorship way, because Dumbledore is kind of a teacher for Harry Potter. You can see that uh, Ron and, um, and Harry are friends. And you can see, for example, things like Harry Potter and Ginny uh, are lovers, uh, as they are at the end of the story. Uh, they used to be friends, or are they are still, and they used to be enemy, uh, mainly, I think, in the second volume, uh, in the Chambers of Regret, where um, I think uh, Ginny succumbed to the influence of Voldemort. So I would say, if you kind of look at it this way, it worked quite well. Uh, I still have to assess with a real metric and um, find, uh, let's say, a score for that. Um, I don't know if I'm still sharing and I can switch to another page. Am I? Yes, so uh, it looks something like that and you can like uh, basically find the relationship between every characters. Uh, so for example, we will be Wesley and draw the Lacroix. And uh, you have um, the graph view, which is oh, buggy right now. And uh, I won't make a full presentation of how you can uh, run it because uh, it takes a lot of time. But the idea at the time was to um, kind of show off uh, during the uh, end of the um, presentation by making it run, but it, times, it takes around 10 minutes. So you can do something like uh, typing, uh, Lord of the Rings or anything, and it will uh, start the scrapping. Um, so here I go, I'm done. Do you have any question? 
Okay, thank you very much, Bruno. Uh, if anyone has question, please post it in the chat, whether you're in the Zoom call um, or on YouTube or uh, following on YouTube. Um, yes, so um, I know maybe you can um, present what other um, applications this approach has. So you showed us here for kind of a book, but do you intend to do it maybe on, um, can you do it maybe for Wikipedia to extract entities from Wikipedia articles or news segments? Yes, so basically uh, as it's starting from uh, a wiki page or a fandom or anything, mm -hmm. uh, I used to uh, try to uh, start in like known people, uh, like politician, and you can like uh, ask for, I don't know, Barack Obama or Donald Trump uh, or Joe Biden or uh, mm -hmm. whoever, and he will like find the pages and kind of work, I would say, which is maybe a bit scary, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, a graph of all the world leaders. Mm. Um, yeah. One of, one of the cool thing would be to, I hope I can do this one day, but uh, kind of use that to create uh, the structure, structured data used by Wikidata and kind of share what I kind of steal to them, which is all the work they did uh, mm. to like make all those pages. Would be a fun, and I would say to this project, if I uh, am able to do something uh, good enough. Um, could you share also um, the link to the GitHub repo of the project? Um, I cannot right now. No, okay. So it's not on GitHub yet. Okay. No. Uh, I could share the link to the website uh, yeah. if some people try, but uh, the issue with that is uh, it takes a lot of computation. It's running on some uh, servers. And uh, if you do that, we'll be spammed. Uh, okay. At L, and so we won't be able to do anything else. Because it's able to handle something like two or three users at, at a time, and uh, even one is like around like five or ten minutes, so it would be kind, kind of hard for them, the servers. Uh, we have a question in the chat. In the chat, if you tried um, the te any temporal elements, and um, like in your example, to kind of follow relationship between characters over time, or for example, over the books. Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I wish I could do that. Uh, right now, I have kind of no idea how to do this, uh, basically because uh, I don't even know uh, which pages go in which orders. Uh, sometimes you end up on uh, summaries. And so summaries is really cool because you can have like a basic relationship between people, but it doesn't necessarily follow the story. Uh, some other things are fan stories or kind of uh, hypothetical things that could happen in the rest of the story. And so all of that uh, doesn't make it really easy to uh, guess based on, I would say, the page or any kind of chronologic event, what's happening uh, before and what's happening after. So in a way you're presenting now kind of an average of the relationship over time in case there is some development or change. Yes. Uh, one of the things I want to work is basically, uh, I want to work on is uh, things like, uh, I would say, uh, um, brotherhood relationship should not ever that much unless you're in Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, so uh, some relationship could be kind of um, split apart from the rest of the um, of, the, of the, the relationship. So I could be in this situation for uh, enemy versus friendly, but uh, kind of have like a direct answer for the other one to be, I would guess, cooler. cooler. Okay, um, thank you very much. We maybe can finish the recording and also say goodbye to all of our um, viewers on YouTube.